Hi, today I'm talking about leak code problem 1414. Find the minimum number of Fibonacci numbers whose sum is k. So what this problem asks you to do is write a function that will take an integer k and return the minimum number of Fibonacci numbers it takes to sum 2k. So uh, in case you're not familiar, the Fibonacci numbers are numbers in a series uh, determined like this. The first two numbers are defined as 1 and 1, and subsequent Fibonacci numbers are the sum of the previous two. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, whoops, 21, and so on indefinitely. So those are the Fibonacci numbers. And they're, they're saying, um, given a number k, so if k is equal to 10, we want you to find the Fibonacci numbers that the minimum number of Fibonacci numbers it takes to sum up to k. So in this case, it might be 8 and 2, or we would return 2 as our answer. It takes two Fibonacci numbers. Now, k is guaranteed to be constrained to uh, 1 and 10 to the 9th. Um, we can think of it as k is a, a positive integer smaller than um, 10 to the 9th. Um, and so what that means is, you can see because 1 is one of our, our Fibonacci numbers, um, one thing we can take for sure is that we would be able to add up um, to any integer. Uh, because we're allowed to repeat numbers, so we could use 8 twice, or we could use 5 twice. We can use 1 any number of times. So we're guaranteed to be able to sum to k. We just need to know what is the minimum number of Fibonacci numbers um, that are required. And so how I approach this, first I thought, you know, do I need recursion? Do I need dynamic programming? Do I need binary search? Um, I think it's kind of a danger of doing too many leak code problems that you begin to pattern match from strategies that you know work on leak code problems and try to apply them where they aren't even necessary. Um, but no, I thought I actually don't need any of that. I just asked myself, how would I do this problem um, if I were a human um, computing it instead of a computer? So if k is 13, what I would do is I'd list the Fibonacci numbers until I got to a number that's greater than 13. And there I know I don't have to do anything else because um, well, 13 is a bad example. Let's say I'm doing 15. Um, I know I don't have to do anything else because it doesn't make sense to say how many times can I add 21 or other positive numbers together to sum to 15. Well, 21 is already greater. It'll never be used. So who cares about numbers greater than this? So, okay, produce Fibonacci numbers up to K and then go backwards over this list of Fibonacci numbers and just take the Fibonacci number away from my k value, um, if I can do that, and otherwise just continue along. So I'd take 13 out of 15, I'm left with 2, um, and then I'm just going to say I can't use 8, can't use 5, can't use 3, can use 2, and I'll keep track of that. So I'll keep track of the numbers that I use, or I'll just keep track of a count, 1, 2. Um, and the other thing I suppose I thought of, I, I experimented with this, um, and I, I found it to be true, but it just kind of occurred to me that um, that um, the Fibonacci number, I'm trying to, I'm struggling to put this into words, the Fibonacci number that's smaller than k, the one smaller than k, so if 15 is our k, the Fibonacci number immediately smaller than it is 13. It, I wondered, can you ever have a Fibonacci number that's, I, I put it in terms of more than, or less than one half of k. And it didn't seem to me that you could. And the reason why I thought of that, why I thought of one half, or why I thought about one half, is because I wondered, do I ever need to try to take more than one um, value away from k? So would I ever be in a situation where I'd say, okay, I can take one 13 out of K. Can I take a second 13 out of K? Can I take a third? Because, you know, do I need a loop in here to do this? And my first solution 
I thought, well, maybe it's possible in some weird circumstance that I could do it. And so I did have a calculation there to figure out how many, um, how many times I could take a Fibonacci number out of K. But then I started to think about this and I thought, just in, I don't have a, like a proof or a strong reason to believe this, but just intuitively seems unlikely to me that any number, um, any number would have a Fibonacci number immediately smaller than it that was less than half of it. So I hope that that kind of makes sense to you. I don't know how to explain that intuition um, any clearer, but let me walk through the code. So as I mentioned, the strategy is first generate the Fibonacci numbers up 2K and then search backwards over the list. So I have this helper function that's just going to be a generator for Fibonacci numbers for me. It begins with cur and prev being one. Um, and then while cur is less than or equal to n, it's going to store the sum of cur and prev into temp. It's going to push prev to be equal to what cur is and cur to get the value that temp had. So this is just going to push cur and prev along our Fibonacci sequence, as we saw here. You know, we have one, one, two, three, five. Cur and prev are both pointing here. So C and P. Cur is going to get the sum of C and P. So it's up here. Um, prev was going to point to what cur was. Cur is going to get the sum of cur and prev. So it's now here. Uh, sorry, prev is going to get what cur was before that. So it's now there. And then we're just going to push them on like that. I hope that uh, kind of messy drawing clarifies what this is doing. And the yield is just here um, to work with the generator function. That'll be yielding one of these cur values every iteration of the loop. So that I can call fib numbers just like this and say I want to convert that generator um, into a list of all the numbers up to uh, k. Um, and then I'm just going to reverse it because I want to step over the list backwards. It would be possible to just um, loop with an index and access the um, i plus one element from the back of the list. Um, but to me, it just seems a bit uh, cleaner to reverse the list and then iterate over it. Um, total, I actually don't need. I'm just going to take away from k. Count is where I sum up, where I increment um, any time I use a Fibonacci number. So I say I want to take a Fibonacci number away from k. Okay, let me increment count, um, and count is what I'm ultimately going to return. Then I'm just going to say, okay, for each Fibonacci number I have in my Fibonacci numbers list, remember it's been reversed at this point, if the Fibonacci number is greater than what's left in k, well, it can't be used to sum up to k, so just continue. Don't bother doing the rest of the, of the loop. Just um, restart and give me the next Fibonacci number. Um, so if we make it to this line, line 26, we know that our Fibonacci number is less than or equal to k. So I'm going to decrement k by the Fibonacci number, and I'm going to increment the count by 1. Um, and then when this loop completes, we will have um, taken our k all the way to 0, and we'll have our count, which is the number of Fibonacci numbers um, that sum up to k, and we can't possibly have any smaller um, value than this because we took the biggest numbers out first. So it just wouldn't make sense to say, well, what if you tried taking out more smaller numbers? Or like, what if you tried to taking out smaller numbers? Um, well, then it would require more of them. Um, so the other thing I'll talk about is just the test cases I used. So um, I really like how LeetCode lets you just type in uh, like a single number to get a new test case. Uh, that's very cool. Um, I use the three example test cases, 7, 10, 19. Why not use the examples that are given to you? I used 1 and 10 to the 9th. Um, those are the constraints, the smallest and the biggest value that I can use. Um, I just put in the number 1,000. You know, it seemed like a, it's an even number. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's probably a, a redundant test case compared to 10 to the 9th. Um, 17. I wanted a number that I thought was prime. Um, 23 is just another kind of random number I threw in there. Uh, 21, I wanted a number that was on the Fibonacci sequence. I wanted a number that was above a number on the Fibonacci sequence and a number that was below it. And then these are two, seems like another kind of special case to me. 
Um, it's a small number. It's on the Fibonacci sequence. I guess it's similar to one, but it's even. Um, and then this is just a random number I typed in to see if it would work. Um, and yeah, it does pass my test cases. Um, I've been running it a few times as I iterate on different um, things that I think might be faster or slower. But um, in its current incarnation, I guess it's 36 milliseconds. Previously, I think there's just some variance in leak code the time that it runs. But I've seen numbers that are between 79 and 90% for speed um, running small variations of this. Trying, for example, reversing over the list backwards instead of reversing it. Um, but yeah, that's that's my solution to leak code problem 1414. Um, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by clicking the like button. If you want to see more, more leak code problems, um, I expect to do about one a day. Um, it's kind of an average rate, so feel free to subscribe um, and say something in the comments to let me know you're, you're watching. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.